Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power x equals 4 to the power x plus 16. And we're going to be looking for real x values. Are there any complex solutions? Something to think about. Let's get started. We have this equation and we're going to put this equation in a nicer form uh, so we can do a little bit more about this. Obviously, you can guess and check at this point, but we want to make sure we find all the solutions. So let's go ahead and log both sides, both sides with base 4. By the way, you don't have to use base 4, but I just wanted to use it because that is my base on the right hand side. And that's going to, you know, be useful. By using power properties, we can go ahead and move these to the front. You know, properties of logs, if you don't know what they are, you can basically just look it up. And maybe one day I'll uh, make a video on properties of logarithms because we use them a lot. Maybe a quick lecture video. So if you go ahead and move the x to the front, you're going to get x times log x. By the way, the base is always going to be 4, so I don't really have to say it. And this is going to be x plus 16. Multiply by log 4, but since our base is the same as the number we're logging, it's just going to be 1. So basically log 4 is 1 because we're using base 4, and this is in general true. Great. But of course, when you log both sides, you kind of have to think about the domain. Obviously, x has to be positive. And when x is positive, this is well defined. If you go back to the original equation, it also requires that x is greater than 0 because x to the power x is kind of like a weird function and it's not, you know, well defined for negatives. It kind of jumps uh, around. So if you think about the uh, graph of this, like we've done this uh, quite a few times before, basically this is what x to the power x looks like. All right. And obviously you can graph both of these functions, but that's not what I'm going to do. So after logging both sides, uh, we get this equation, but to make it a little nicer, I want to isolate the log on the left hand side and write this as x plus 16 over x equals the log x. And now we can go ahead and separate this and write it as 1 plus 16 over x. We have to make sure that x does not equal 0, but that's never going to happen because x must be greater than 0 all the time. So we're good. Another good thing to observe here uh, is because 1 plus 16 over x, if you know that x is positive, therefore 16 over x is also going to be positive, which means we're kind of adding something positive to 1, which means this expression right here is going to be greater than 1. I was going to write 0, but that's not the case. Well, it is greater than 0, but I want to be more accurate. Obviously, this is going to be greater than 1. And that's kind of nice because if you think about the left-hand side, this means log x is greater than 1 which means that x is greater than 4. So that's kind of nice. It's good to have a bound, whether it's an upper bound or lower bound. In this case, we do have a lower bound for x. We know that x must be greater than 4. So how did we get that? Uh, but just by using the definition of logs, this is the base, that's the exponent, and the rest is fairly easy. Okay, great. So we know that x must be greater than 4, but that still doesn't give us the whole thing. Let's go ahead and rewrite our equation, log x, equals 1 plus 16 over x. Now at this point, you can again guess the solution, uh, but you got to make sure that you're getting all the solutions or, or proving that there are no more solutions from the, uh, you know, there are no more solutions besides the ones you're getting. Anyways, so how do I approach this problem? I'm going to approach it from a calculus perspective. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, look at each uh, function. Let's see how each function behaves. So suppose f of x equals log x, my base is 4 again. Now I want to write this uh, using ln because I'm going to differentiate this function and I don't really want to deal with the derivative of a log with uh, different bases. So I'm just going to write it as ln x over ln 4 by using the change of base formula. You can turn everything into a different base. Now. 1 over ln 4 is a constant, or ln 4 is a constant at the bottom, so I don't really have to worry about it. Let's just differentiate the um, numerator, and by the way, I'm not differentiating yet, so I'm going to find out what f prime of x is. That's the derivative. Uh, the derivative of ln x, of course x has to be positive, is 1 over x 
and that is divided by the same constant because constant is just a constant okay you can also use the quotient rule but that's not necessary here and this becomes 1 over x ln 4. now what do we know about x we know that x must be greater than 4 we initially said x must be positive but we got a better lower bound for x which is nice and when x is greater than 4 actually this is this quantity is going to be negative did I say negative? I meant positive. Okay. So this f prime is always positive. Uh, so this means our function f is always increasing. And I think we already know that, right? Even though um, it's a well-known fact, I just wanted to quickly go over it. You know, if you have the log function, it's going to be always increasing, unless the base is less than 1, obviously. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second piece. Uh, we have this function right here, 1 plus 16 over x. Let's call that g of x. And then from here, um, we notice that this is a hyperbola, right? Let's go ahead and differentiate it. Um, and this hyperbola is only defined for r beside 0. So you have to subtract 0 because x cannot be 0. But otherwise, it's uh, well defined. So if you differentiate g, uh, you're going to get the derivative of 1, which is a constant, is 0. How do you differentiate uh, 16 over x? Well, the question is, how do you differentiate 1 over x? If you differentiate 1 over x, you can um, you get negative 1 over x squared because you can write this as x to the power of negative 1. And then when you differentiate it, the power becomes the coefficient and you reduce the power and that gives you negative 1 over x squared. A lot of times, calculus students will memorize this as a fact because that is pretty common. And also, this is helpful because if you're trying to integrate 1 over x squared dx, you already know that this is going to be negative 1 over x because this is um, 1 over x squared, not negative 1 over x squared. And of course, don't forget the constant, right? All right, so the derivative here, 16 is a constant. Therefore, the derivative is going to be negative 16 over x squared. Now, notice that we got a positive derivative here, but x squared is positive and it's not 0. And this is always going to be negative. So that means g of x is always, always, I can't even write always, decreasing. Awesome. What is that supposed to mean? We have a function which is always increasing. We have another function which is always decreasing. And we are trying to solve this equation. That means they're only going to intersect at a single point. So at this point, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see what that looks like. But here's the thing. We still haven't found the solution yet. So let's go ahead and try to find the solution first before we look at the graph. So we have log x. Oh, that's not what I want. We have log x equals 1 plus 16 over x. And we notice that x is greater than 4. So I'm just guessing that if this has an integer solution, otherwise it will be really impossible. Like, you know, you can't really guess the solution. Uh, I'm guessing that x uh, is going to be a power of 4. Uh, but uh, 4 is not possible, so can I try uh, 16, 4 to the second power? If I plug in 16 on both sides, I get, you know, this becomes a 2. And on the right-hand side, I get a 2. So that means they're equal, which means x equals 16 is a solution. Of course, it's guess and check, I know that, but we at least we have a lower bound. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And here's the graph of the uh, both of these functions. Log x and 1 plus 16 over x. As I said earlier, our log function is going to be increasing. And the other one is the, the hyperbola is going to be decreasing. As you can see, it is only defined where x does not equal 0. And uh, log x is only defined for positive x values. But they intersect at 16, 2, which means x equals 16 is the only solution to this equation. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.